So, for today's video, we will be tackling about eco literacy and the seven environmental principles of nature. Ecological literacy, also referred to as eco literacy, is the ability to understand the natural systems that make life on Earth possible. Eco literacy is the power that comes from understanding and awareness of how nature's living systems work. The term eco literacy was first published 24 years ago by Capra, who founded the Center for Eco Literacy a non-profit organization dedicated to education for sustainable living. Together with others, they have advanced eco-literacy with a focus on the creation of sustainable human communities and society. What do you mean by an eco-literate person? An eco-literate person is prepared to be an effective member of sustainable society with well-rounded abilities of head, heart, hands, and spirit. According to Dr. Tom Pook, an ecologically literate person of the 21st century will be considered as the responsible, lifelong learners who strives to improve the human condition and the environment within the context of self human groups, the biosphere, and the ecosphere. To be eco-literate means understanding the principles of organization of ecological communities, constructive collaboration between members of the community, and using these principles for creating sustainable human communities. An ecologically literate society would be a sustainable society which do not destroy the natural environment in which they depend. Sustainable development is the idea that human societies must live and meet their needs without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. The official definition of sustainable development was developed for the first time in the Brundtland Report in 1987. Specifically, sustainable development is a way of organizing society so that it can exist in the long term. This means taking into account both the imperatives present and those of the future, such as the preservation of the environment and natural resources or social and economic equity. Here are some ways in how to develop eco-literacy in schools. According to Daniel Goldman, Lisa Binet, and Zenobia Barlow, there are five ways to develop eco-literacy and that explain how we can teach children to care deeply about the environment. First, develop empathy for all forms of life. We may begin to alter our viewpoint from a view of humans as distinct and superior to a more real view of people as part of the natural world by understanding the common needs we have with other organisms. From that vantage point, we may broaden our circles of empathy to include other living forms' quality of existence, real care for their well-being and action. Teachers may help students develop this capacity for caring by teaching them about the critical functions that plants and animals play in maintaining the web of life. Empathy may also be cultivated through direct contact with other living things, such as maintaining live plants and animals in the classroom, conducting field trips to natural areas, zoos, botanical gardens, and animal rescue facilities, and participating in community service projects. Second, embrace sustainability as a community practice. By learning about the wondrous ways that plants, animals, and other living things are interdependent, students are inspired to consider the rule of interconnectedness within their communities and see the value in strengthening those relationships by thinking and acting cooperatively. Third, make the invisible visible. 
the road between a decision and its consequences used to be quick and visible, and it is still for certain societies today. For example, if a homesteading family clears their property of trees, they may soon face flooding, soil erosion, a loss of shade, and a significant reduction in biodiversity. If we want to build more life-affirming ways of living, we must find ways to make visible the things that seem invisible. Educators may assist through a variety of methods. They may use incredible web-based tools like Google Earth to allow students to virtually go to various areas and nations and observe the environment. Teachers may, may be able to organize field tours to see locations that has been silently degraded as part of the system that supplies energy to the majority of us. Fourth, anticipate unintended consequences. Unintended consequences of human actions are responsible for many of the current environmental issues. A handful of noteworthy techniques for predicting unforeseen consequences can be taught to students by educators. When an activity threatens to have a harmful influence on the environment or human health, precautionary measures should be implemented regardless of whether a cause and effect link has been scientifically proven. Another method is to take a system's thinking viewpoint, which investigates the connections and interconnections among the many components of the problem, rather than evaluating it by breaking it down into its individual elements. We may learn from nature by looking at how natural communities recover from unexpected effects. Fifth, understand how nature sustains life. Ecoliterate people understand that nature is the source of life. As a result, they have turned to nature as their teacher and acquired numerous K principles. Three of these concepts are very important for maintaining an ecoliterate lifestyle. To begin with, ecoliterate people have learned from nature that all living species are part of a complex, link, web of life, and that individuals who live in a given location rely on their interconnectedness for existence. Teachers may help students comprehend the complex web of interactions that exist inside a location by having them study it as a system. Second, eco-literate individuals are more aware of the existence of systems at various scales. Students will get a greater understanding of the complicated interactions of relationships that maintain an ecosystem, as well as the consequences for survival that even minor interruptions may have, as well as the necessity of building links that enable a system respond to changes. Finally, eco-literate people practice a style of life that meets the demand of the current generation while also preserving nature's intrinsic potential to sustain life in the future. This necessitates students learning to consider the big picture while making life decisions. To help educators foster socially and emotionally engaged eco-literacy, we have identified the following five practices. These are, of course, not the only ways to do so. But we believe that educators who cultivate these practices offer a strong foundation for becoming eco-literate, helping themselves and their students build healthier relationships with other people and the planet. And now, here are the seven environmental principles of nature. First, nature knows best. Second, all forms of life are important. Third, everything is connected to everything else. Fourth, everything changes. Fifth, everything must go somewhere. Sixth, ours is a finite earth. Seven, Nature is beautiful, and we are the stewards of God's creation. Nature knows best. This principle is the most basic and in fact 
encompasses all the others. Humans have to understand nature and have to abide by the rules nature dictates. In essence, one must go not against the natural processes if one would like to ensure a continuous and steady supply of resources. One natural process that needs serious attention is nutrient cycling. In nature, nutrients pass from the environment to the organisms and back to the environment. Any disruption in this cycle can bring about imbalance. Our nature knows everything. Sometimes, it knows what is best for us. All forms of life are important. Each organism plays a fundamental role in nature. Since such occupational or functional position, otherwise known as niche, cannot be simultaneously occupied by more than one species, it is apparent that all living things must be considered as inevitable in the maintenance of homeostasis in the ecosystem. Everything is connected to everything else. This principle is best exemplified by the concept of the ecosystem. In an ecosystem, all biotic and amniotic components interact with each other to ensure that the system is perpetuated. Any outside interference may result in an imbalance in the deterioration of the system. Everything changes. It is said that the only permanent thing is change. Our world is constantly changing and nothing is permanent anymore. Even each day, humans try to change their living to fit into the world. Everything must go somewhere. When a piece of paper is thrown away, it disappears from sight, but it does not cease to exist. It ends up elsewhere. Everything goes somewhere and nothing goes nothing. It has its own way to go. Ours is a finite earth. Just how long would be the earth be able to sustain demands and its resources? This is a question that needs serious reflection. Unless the factors of population growth, lifestyles, and polluting technologies are checked, the collapse of the earth might be inevitable. Nature is beautiful, and we are stewards of God's creation. Among all creatures, humans are the only ones made in God's image and have been given the right to have dominion over all His creations. Being the most intelligent and gifted with reason, humans are capable of manipulating creation to their own advantage. We are not made to rule the world but to help the world. Humans are God's creation and we need to take care of everything.